Jesus' name we pray. Let's begin to commit ourselves into the hand of God this morning. That as we listen to his word, that the Holy Spirit divine, we open our eyes of understanding and give us fresh insight from his word. Open our, open, just pray, open my eyes, O oh God. Give me fresh insight from your word. Give me the message of the hour that we, that we put me on this race to do your will. It is written of in, in the book, in the volume of the book, that I have come to do your will. That we need the insight of the hour, the message of the hour, fresh understanding of the scripture, that we'll be able to embark on practical, I mean, practical examples of living out the Christian life everywhere we go, in the neighborhood, in the church, in our places of work, everywhere we we'll find ourselves, that this word of life will minister to us and quicken us again. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Precious Redeemer, we thank you for the privilege we have to present ourselves before you this morning. We thank you for all you have been doing for us from the beginning of the year, how you have been feeding us from your word. And here we come to the first Sunday in the third month of the year, and we are trusting you for more, more revelation, more insight, more strength, more grace to run this race and to finish strong. Father, we pray that you grant unto every one of us in Jesus' name. As we open the pages of the scripture, we ask and we pray that you open our heart of understanding and give us corresponding strength, corresponding insight, corresponding grace to live up to expectation in line with kingdom service in Jesus' name. Thank you for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Briefly before we uh, come to the end of service today, we'll be sharing together uh, a follow-up to the topic we treated in the side scripture this morning, serving one another in love. And as a choir have sung to us, let there be love among us. Let us show love one to another. Show a little bit of love and kindness. And I pray that love will be practical in our midst in Jesus' name. So we'll be looking at this topic, engaging in kingdom-focused service. Engaging in kingdom-focused service with love. Engaging in kingdom-focused service with love. It simply follows that anything we do from home, among our family members, that should be a kingdom focus. That should be, it should be done with kingdom interest. Whatever we do in the church, whatever we do, even in the secular setting, in the secular setting, it should be with kingdom interest in mind. And so we'll be looking at our text this morning from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. It's a popular verse. We've read it over time. And my prayer is that God will give us fresh insight from this passage this morning in Jesus' name. The scripture says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be what? Again? Unmovable. Always doing what? Always abounding in the work of the Lord. I will stop there for now. Yes, Apostle Paul admonishing the Christians in Corinthians and by extension to every one of us, either as a youth, a young adult, a college student, a, a, an adult, a married man, an unmarried woman, whatever. He said, therefore, my beloved brethren, this scripture is open. My beloved brethren is not limited to a particular set of people. It's open to as many that have been redeemed and ransomed by the blood of the Lamb. He said, be ye steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. The work of the Lord we are talking about here is any act, any action, any lifestyle that is done in conformity with kingdom in conformity with kingdom service, in conformity in, with kingdom principle, with the purpose of promoting kingdom interest. Anything we do, anything we do, either in the church or outside the church, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Any work that is done with the interest, with the purpose of promoting kingdom interest, 
with the purpose of populating the kingdom of God is what we are referring to as the work of God. Any conscious effort made in winning souls, in leading the blind to the Savior, in leading the sinner to the Savior, any effort, any winsome effort we embark upon that can bring souls closer to God, that can salvage them from the pit of sin, from the, from the, from the depression caused by sicknesses and satanic attack, any act of kindness that can bring them to the solution, to the provision of Calvary, is what we are referring to as the work of the Lord. And Apostle Paul said, be ye steadfast, unmovable. Of course, you know as much as I do that you don't get rewarded for what you start. Neither do you get reward for what you continue, especially in sports. You can only be awarded for what you finish and what you accomplish successfully. And it is what you do successfully that history make haste to record. And that's why I suppose I said, be steadfast. How should we be steadfast? There are many things that will come to shake your service, your conviction, your determination. Be steadfast and unmovable. Unmovable as what? Just like a rock in the midst of the sea or in the midst of a river. Some of us have been to a beachside or to a waterside, a flowing river, and you see a small stone or a rock standing in the midst. No matter the waves of the river, no matter the turbulence, no matter the storm, come rain, come shine, that rock remains there. So the kind of love we have to show among brethren is such that we'll be steadfast, unmovable, just like that rock in the midst of the water, no matter the, uh, the force in which the current of the river is flowing, the rock remains unmovable. And I pray God will make us unmovable in Jesus' name. What does that connote? It simply means that there are times there will be waves. There are times there will be storms. There are times that something will want to shake. Why am I even doing this? I've been picking this brother to church for long. He doesn't even recognize it. I've been helping this person for long. He doesn't even recognize it. Why am I even doing it? Be steadfast. Be unmovable. Always abounding. And God will give us the grace to continue to abound without giving up in Jesus' name. Tell your neighbor, don't give up. Don't give up the work of the Lord. Don't give up the service of God. This kingdom-focused service we are talking about is for every genuine believer. And nobody should be left out. Nobody should be ashamed of promoting kingdom interest. Nobody should be ashamed. And it is in diverse dimension. There are things that are of temporal value and there are services that are of eternal value. Either temporal value, of course, it could be temporal services in the church, trying to dust benches, trying to clean up the church, making the church a healthy place, a viable place of worship, where worshipers can come and connect with their creator. Whatever you are doing, do it with a, with a purpose of kingdom, of promoting kingdom interest. I, I once heard of this story of a woman. Oh, let me start from where uh, the story started. God revealed to a pastor of a church that somebody great is going to die in his church. And of course, revelation are given for two purposes. If it is the good revelation, you pray it to materialize. If it's the, a bad revelation, you pray and ward it off, right? Yeah. So, ah, we don't want that. We don't want to bury anybody. And they started praying. Oh, oh God, let your protection be sure. At the end of the year, they took inventory. Ah, said somebody great who will die in your church. So they were looking at all their big men, all the so-called big men in the church. So at the end of the year, by December 34, oh, we give thanks to God, nobody die. Yes, that revelation was cancelled. And when they finished out, there was nine water. Somebody great eventually died, and you didn't know. Ah, they said, who? They said, it is that woman that used to dust the benches in the church, that used to sweep the floor of the church. You did better ceremony, but because maybe she was not giving you all the thousands of money. It is that same woman. Because when she comes to church very early to dust the benches, to clean the floor, she will say, oh God, everybody that steps into this church today, let them have a personal encounter. Anyone that sits on this seat today, let them have a personal encounter. That's somebody dusting, cleaning the church with kingdom focus. With kingdom interest in mind. And the pastor became so gentle. And the pastor became so humble. Every service, we are talking of 
engaging in kingdom focused service with love. With the love of winning someone to Christ. And we should not be ashamed. I've said that we should not be ashamed of anything that can promote kingdom interest. Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, he said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because of what? Because it is the power of God unto salvation. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. Why? Every bearer of the gospel is a carrier of power. Every bearer of the gospel is a carrier of power. He is, I suppose, I'm not ashamed of this gospel. Because inside that gospel is the power to save from sin. Inside that gospel is the power to save from sickness. Inside that gospel is the power to liberate people from the depression that comes as a result of affliction from Satan and the likes. I'm not ashamed, and so we should not be ashamed. Tell your neighbor, don't be ashamed of the gospel. Don't be ashamed. As a student, don't be ashamed in the classroom. As a, as a worker in, the, in your place of work, don't be ashamed. It is the power. It is the power of God. It, is, it carries the power. So when you do anything to promote kingdom interest, don't forget that you have power resident in you because it is the power of God unto salvation. What then is the gospel? The gospel is the good news. Of course, you know as much as I do. It's the good news. It's the provision of Calvary to salvage man from his, from his predicament. The gospel has the potential energy, the, 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 the in heart energy, the potency to salvage man, to liberate man from his predicament. And so all gospel believers, if you are a gospel believer, we are expected to serve in one capacity or the other with a kingdom focus in mind. So no sitting on the fence. You don't necessarily need to be a worker. Like that woman in the, that I just told you that died and people didn't know her. Nobody knew her, but heaven took note of her. Heaven took note. What are you doing for your sibling? And seem as if he or she doesn't care. What are you doing for your parents? And seem as if instead of, instead of well done, it is insult. What are you doing for your spouse? And you are going out of your way to get it done. Do it with kingdom focus. What are you doing for your children? And it's as if those children are not recipro reciprocating. Do it with kingdom focus. When you, are a big, when you are doing it with kingdom focus, and you are not ashamed of what you are doing, that same gospel that has the power will save that person to Christ in Jesus' name. And then, it then follows that we have to do this Everywhere we go, but the question, the, but the honors is left on us. The Englishman says, "Charity begins where." Charity begins. So, if charity begins at home, this kind of kingdom-focused service should begin in the church. Say amen. amen, and it should begin in our church in Jesus' name. It should begin among the brethren. It should begin in our individual family, as we have the opportunity. Let us do good to them that are of the household of faith. It simply means that this kind of service we are talking about should start with the household of faith. If you don't get any other person, if you don't get, if you don't get, if you don't get, if you cannot get people outside there, make sure you get your family members. Do it with kingdom focus. Noah, when you go back to Genesis, from, right from the age of 500 to when God called him and he started building the hack and he started preaching for almost 100 years and the time that the flood started at the age of 600, it was somehow difficult. He couldn't get much, but he made sure he secured all the members of his family, his immediate family, on the register of God's salvation, on the, on the, on the, on the, on, and register them on, the, on God's list of salvation from the flood. Not only his sons, he made sure that he secured the safety of his daughter, I mean, of his daughter's in law. Not only that, Abraham equally secured the safety of Lot. Though Lot has gone away, who is that person that has gone away from you? Lot has chosen Sodom and Gomorrah. Has anybody so close to you decided to desert you? 
Abraham still stood in the gap and made sure that Lot was spared. Tell your neighbor, your sibling must be spared. And we have to show it with the love. Abraham didn't say, you this young one, you should have allowed me to choose before you choose. But, but after that, Abraham, someone first would have said, oh, that is his portion. Yeah, he's just so dumb and Gomorrah. Let him go and face the consequence. But he secured. He stood in the gap. Let's stand in the gap of those ones that are even stepping on our toes. Showing love sacrificially. And Lord himself, he went an extra mile to secure the safety of his family, but for his wife. He secured the safety of his daughters. But he probably was thinking that hey, his wife should be matured enough to be, no, tell your spouse, tell you the, if you're a married man, tell you the person next to you, don't leave your spouse behind. Yes, do it sacrificially. Don't leave your spouse behind. And if you are a youth in the church, you may say, ah, well, I, I, I don't care. See, Phil Andrew made sure he secured the, 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 the safety of Peter. He equally invited him to Christ. And Philip equally made sure that his friend became a follower of Jesus. And when his friend was even doubting, he said, ah, can anything good come out of Nazareth? He said, Nathaniel, you just come and see. Let's go an extra mile. Let's sprint them. The friend in your class, the one that is bullying you, go an extra mile. You have to outsmart that bullying with the love. When they are insulting you, treat their insult with the sort of grace. Let every word proceeding from your mouth be seasoned with salt, filled with grace. And so God will help us and all of us become profitable in his kingdom in Jesus' name. I say we all become profitable in his kingdom in Jesus' name. Now, to enroll in this kind of service, kingdom-focused service, what do we do? How do we get into it? How do we render a service, a service that will be remarkable before men and acceptable before God? We'll simply consider the ABC of kingdom focus service. Very simple. The ABC of kingdom focus service. A, attributes of kingdom focus service. B, the benefits of enrolling, of engaging in kingdom focus service. C, the condition for engaging in kingdom focus service. Let's open our Bible to John 15, verse 16. John 15. John 15, verse 16. Say, Ye have not chosen me, but have chosen you, and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. This is the master saying, we didn't choose him. He was the one that chose us. Just by mercy, not by not our own effort, not by our own work of righteousness. In fact, our righteousness has filled us before him. And if he has chosen us by mercy, we have to also show that same kind of love to others. Many of us have done some things that are so terrible that could piss God up to end up our life overnight. But God showed us his mercy. And we are still alive today. So the next time we find someone smoking outside there, know that that is me except for grace. The next time you see somebody misbehaving outside there, that is me except for grace. And how we need to go an extra mile to show this kind of love. You have chosen me. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And for what purpose? He said that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. Matthew 22, verse 14. Matthew 22, verse 14. Matthew 22, verse 14. Let's read about the count of two. One to go. For many are called, but few. Don't your neighbor, are you among the called? Ask him again, are you among the chosen? It's one thing to be called. It's one thing to be a called believer. It's another thing entirely to be a chosen believer. Many are called, but few are chosen. For this kind of kingdom focused service, we need chosen believers. People who have kingdom interests in mind. And how do we go about it? Attributes of kingdom focused service. The word service is a seven lettered word. 
and we look at it one by one. What are the seven things that we need to know to engage in this kingdom focus service? Hence, this stands for selfless and sacrificial. This kind of service is selfless, it's sacrificial. You go all the way, just like our choir sang today. He didn't need to die. He didn't commit any offense, but he did it just for the sake of you and myself, so that we can all escape the penalty of sin, because the wages of sin is death. Every sin man commits is demanding for life. The wages of sin is death. There's no negotiation about it. The repercussion for iniquity, for stealing, for cheating, for fornication, for immorality, for manipulating figures, the wages of sin is death. Then every sin we commit, every sin a man commits is demanding for his blood. It's demanding for his blood. So Jesus did this sacrificially. He suffered a lot of insult. While on the cross of Calvary, under that agonizing pain, some people were busy casting lot on his garment, doing one for me, one for you. And, that, and, I, and apart from that, another thief on the cross, on, the, on his side, was saying, if truly you are Christ, we will deliver every one of us. And another thief on the cross was raised, running his mouth against him. But Jesus said, Father, forgive them. Because they don't know what they are doing. Under that kind of severe pain, can we go an extra mile and pray for the forgiveness of others and intercede for them, stepping on our toes, bullying us, even paying us back with evil, even when we are trying to do all our best? Let us be steadfast. Tell your neighbor, be steadfast, unmovable. Jesus did not lose his focus. He didn't lose his focus. He didn't say, look at the people that I've come to die for. You think I'm dying because of my, of my own sin? No. He said, Father, forgive them. They don't know. They don't understand. So the next time someone is trying to provoke you, you have to outsmart that provocation by going in the realm of the Spirit. Say, Father, forgive this one. He doesn't know. She doesn't know. Selfless and sacrificial. We don't have the time. Second Timothy 4.22 Apostle Paul said, preach the word. He said, be instant in season and out of season. Give it the price it takes. Paul said, I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. There's a price tag for this kind of kingdom focus service. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. E there stands for edifies. This kind of kingdom focus service edifies everybody around. It doesn't pull down. Romans 14, 19. Romans 14. Romans chapter 14, verse 19. It said, let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace, and things where which one may edify another. Let us follow after the things. Let us say things. Let us act things which make for peace, and things where which one may edify another. This kind of sacrificial, I mean, kind of focus service edifies. And Acts chapter 20, verse 32. Acts 20 verse 32. Acts chapter 20 verse 32. Acts 20 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them which are sanctified. He said, I commend you to God. I commend you to the word of his grace. So what do you, how do you edify? You edify with the word of grace. The word that is able to build up, not the one that can scatter. Not the one that we tear down. Not the one that we demoralize. Eh? Like, I was in the office one day and one professor, we were working together with one professor and he said, and he looked at one, one, one of the office uh, staff and he said, look, this one, you call yourself a Christian. With the way you behave now, you can't even enter the kingdom of heaven. Ah. When we go back to the office, the staff said, thank God that it is not this madam that we hold the key to enter, for everybody to enter the kingdom of heaven. Because you should just be locking the door against everyone. <laughs> Thank God that the criteria for entry heaven is not in our hand. Now, what are we trying to say? We should not say a word that we demoralize people. We should not say a word that we pull down people. He said, I commend you unto the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. Even if that person has gone into error, commend the person unto the word of grace. Can you say a word that will bring that person to his senses, to our senses and correct his or our ways without necessarily pulling him down? 
without necessarily closing the door of heaven if you have the key? That is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance. Give them a space. Give your child a space. Give your child a space in the kingdom. Don't say this child, you will never hear. No. Let him, let him have an opportunity. He said, that is able to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. There is space for all. The kingdom of heaven is open to all. We should not pull down anybody. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Let the house there stands for recognizing the spiritual and physical need of people around. Kingdom focus service. It recognizes the spiritual and physical need of people around. We don't have the time. If you have, you can just jot it down. Luke chapter 22. If you read all the way from verse 1 to verse 32. It's all, all about the story of what Judas did and what happened to Peter. After Satan entered into Judas in verse 3. And Judas sneaked out of the fellowship of Jesus. The devil didn't stop there. If you go to verse 31 to 32, Jesus had to stand in the gap because he could see, he could recognize the spiritual need of his disciples. And he thought to Peter, he said, Simon, Simon, the devil has desired to have thee and to sift you away like a witch. But I have prayed for you. And when thou art converted, do what? Strengthen thy brethren. So Jesus could no longer suffer any loss. The same chapter, Satan has just hijacked one of his disciples. Ah, he said, no. He want to hijack Peter again. Peter wasn't aware. Peter was just busy sleeping and waking up, eating and following Jesus. He said, See, Satan, I have desired to have you, but I prayed for you. And when you are converted, strengthen your breath. Because Jesus knew this same Peter will still rise up one day and influence 3,000 souls without preparing a sermon outline. He could foresee. So don't write off your son. Don't write off your daughter. Don't write off your sibling. Don't write off your spouse. Stand. Recognize the spiritual need. You never can tell that the one that the devil wants to hijack now may be the one that will stand in front of people and speaking boldly without any shame, bringing multitudes to Christ in their numbers. And the Lord will make it so in Jesus' name. It recognizes also the physical needs of the people. In Matthew chapter 14 and Matthew chapter 15, just one chapter after the other. In Matthew chapter 14, Christ Jesus fed 5,000 people with how many loaves of bread? Five loaves and two pieces of fish. And the same chapter, in the following chapter, what happened? The people came, see, when they were, he was holding the crusade, he recognized that these people have been with him and they must be hungry by now. It recognizes the physical needs of the people. So he made provision, give them to eat. He said, how can we get food for this number of people? He said, and he made provision for, he recognizes the need, the physical need of the people. And believe you me, people like food. People like somebody that can meet their immediate need. The following day, Jesus was holding, he was going, multitude were following him. I want multitude to follow him. That is a natural phenomenon. And because Jesus was not a politician, because there are some politicians now that they would distribute some things just to win the, the attention of people to vote for them. But Jesus was, the following day when they came, I said, ah, well, you, you people are coming because of food. But he still gave them the word. He recognized the need of the people and used and capitalized on that need to minister to them an eternal message that can satisfy them and, and make them enter into the kingdom of heaven. Let's endeavor. To recognize the need of the people. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Let a V stand for volunteer. It, this kind of kingdom focus service, volunteers easily to help without being nominated. It volunteers easily to help without anybody coercing, without anybody nominating. What do you see that has a need in the church? You are going outside the church. That can you volunteer to help someone? Can you volunteer to assist someone? It volunteers. Somebody is dying. Can you volunteer? Can you help? It volunteers easily to help without being nominated. Without being nominated. See, in Mark chapter 2, verse 3 to 10, we don't have the time now. Mark chapter 2, verse 3 to 10, it was, it's all about the story of the man that was sick of palsy. This man was bedridden. He couldn't help himself. 
he was maybe his date of death has already been certified that he's going to die at also time. And his friends, four of his friends say, ah, we cannot allow this, our friend, to die. And they were looking for a solution. They heard about Jesus. And when they came to where Jesus was, there was no way to enter. We will not allow this man to die in our presence. The next thing was like they, want to, they went to, to the top of the building and loosened the sheet of the, of, the, of, the, of the roofing sheet and dropped it down before Jesus. If he's going to die, let him die in the presence of Jesus. And guess what? When Bible says, when in verse 5, when Jesus, it said, when Jesus saw their faith, not the faith of the man, the man was helpless. We have so many helpless siblings in our family. They are dead in their sin. Helpless workers in our places of work. Dead in their philosophy of agnosticism, of atheism, I mean, being atheist. We have several people that are helpless in the school. Students that you see them, you think, can these people be redeemed? And can, can they be redeemed at all? These people were helpless. This man was helpless. And um, Jesus Christ said, when he saw their faith, he saw the faith of his friends. He had pity on the man. And the first thing was like, he addressed his sin and then gave him the healing for his sickness. We don't need to give up. Tell your neighbor, don't give up on your neighbor. Don't give up on your sibling. Don't give up. These people volunteered. Don't allow them to die in their helpless state. Don't allow your neighbor to die in his or her helpless state. Volunteer to help. In whatever way you can bring them to church, volunteer to help. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Letter high. Identifies with the need of the people close by. Just following about volunteering. It identifies with the need, with the need. We don't have the time now, but you can read the story of Matthew chapter 8, verse 1 to 5. Matthew chapter 8, verse 1 to 5. Jesus was on a route, of, was on a mission route. And several people came, they wanted healing. Blind man will come, a leper will come. Oh, can I, can I live that way? Can, you, can I be clean? And Jesus was just addressing their problem. Another man came, that same Matthew chapter 8. Several people wanted to, be, to see Jesus. Several people wanted his attention. And one man said, see. It's as if, if I keep on waiting like this, Jesus will, my child is almost dying, my servant is almost dying at home. He said, just speak the word, and my servant shall be healed. By the way, Peter's mother-in-law was also sick. Now, Jesus Christ gave his word. He didn't say, Peter, okay, go and heal the mother, I mean, go to your mother and give her the word. No, he identified, see, these are people, the inner carcass. It's, there's no partiality about it. In Akakos, identify. He, ident he came to Peter's house. And when he got there, what did he do? He, as the Bible says, and he touched her hand, and the fever left her. And what happened? She arose and ministered what? Unto them. Now, get it right. We never heard of Peter's wife, let alone of his mother-in-law, except for this record of sickness. Probably, I'm just thinking loud. Probably Peter's mother-in-law has been one of the critics of Jesus. Has been one of the critics of Peter. And probably she has been telling her daughter, say, we don't know what is wrong with your husband, though. He's a professional fisherman. He should be in the business of following, making, uh, fetching fish. But the day he started following this man, the fish, we have not been having enough fish to eat, let the love to sell. We, when others are going for healing, to, they, they, she didn't come out. Others were following Jesus. She, didn't come, she stood at home and she was dying of fever. And probably she has been criticizing and castigating and saying, well, I don't know, he has gone, he, no more fish, no more thing to sell, no more thing to eat. But when Jesus identified and came to, his, to her house, ah, he, after receiving the healing, the Bible says she arose immediately and started ministering. That is identified. And when we identify with the need of the people, they will come. And how do we do that? As a student, you see somebody who is weak in the mathematics, weak in maybe in an engineering course. You say, identify with that person. When you identify, you think the next time you are inviting the person who she will not come. When we identify with the need of people in our place of work, see, let me quickly share this practical example. In my place of work, there's a lady, a citizen, although of Spanish background, 
She doesn't believe in God. She doesn't. Let alone going to church. But I made up my mind. One day we were to work together in a particular unit. And I said, oh God, give me the method of the hour. The message of the hour. And as I started talking, of course, some things will come to challenge what you have in mind. And I was saying, he said, Joshua, don't talk about that fucking thing anymore. Ah. I said, and I do. Oh, because, and because I know the gospel I carry is not a fucking thing. Because I know the gospel I carry has the power of God unto salvation. I said, ah. I said, what I'm giving to you is not a fucking thing. Ah. And he said, okay, we'll talk about this some other time. And I keep persisting. I knew Friends Day was on the way. The one we did last year. And whenever I say, I do, you need help? Kingdom Focus Service. Not because I want to help, but the King for Kingdom Focus. I went and said, you need, I will do this. Oh, I, when I say, something, something, this thing is so heavy for you. Ah, let me help you. Kingdom Focus, with the purpose of, one day will be one day. So when, ah, then when the problem was, ah, I said, there is a function. No? I said, there is a function. That was Friends Day. And I want you to be my special guest at that function. Guess what? Just like Peter identified with the need of that woman, whether she was criticizing Jesus before, whether she was castigating Peter before, but the moment Jesus came to her house, she began to minister. This lady not only came, she brought her boyfriend on the friend's day. Some people are going, Sister Kepas is my witness here. Yeah? She doesn't have a Bible. I said, please go and give that lady a Bible. Uh, Sister Honey, I don't know whether, whether she is in church. She was the one. Because the service was a little bit, a little bit longer, they have to leave. I told Sister Honey, please. Give her the service. She's standing in church today. She can be a witness. She was the one that drove home the message. How did it happen? Somebody that doesn't believe in God not only came to church, she brought a good boyfriend. What are we saying? We are talking of identify. Kingdom focus. Kingdom focus. Everything we do in the classroom as a student, with your roommate, do it with kingdom focus. Do it with kingdom focus. As a worker, those people that are, you know, that are even trying to provoke you, that are make, trying to piss you up, do service. Go out of your way. Identify with their need, even when it's not convenient. And when it's time for you to talk about the gospel, they'll follow easily. It's a basic principle. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. We need to outsmart all criticism. Outsmart their criticism with love. Outsmart anybody that is criticizing your gospel. Anyone that is saying, ah, since she started attending deeper life, we've not been seeing her, I don't know what's wrong with her. i smart that criticism with kingdom focus service. Anyone that is blackmailing you because of your, of your uh, profession as a Christian, i smart that blackmailing with kingdom focus service. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Let us see, stands for consistent. We have to be consistent, unmovable as a rock in the sea, as I told us earlier. We have to be persistent about it. Waves will come. That rock in the river remains there. They may bully you. They may shout on you. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep showing love. Your daughter is misbehaving. Keep showing love. And give her the word that can build her hope, not the one that will tear her down. Apostle I commend you unto the word of grace that is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among the sanctified. Secure an inheritance for them in the kingdom of God. And the Lord will honor our service in Jesus' name. Let our heat stands for embraces. It, uh, this kind of kingdom focus service embraces every opportunity of duty with a winsome spirit. It embraces every opportunity of duty with a winsome spirit. Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10 says, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it what? Do it with thy mind. It embraces every opportunity. What opportunity do you have? You find yourself in the classroom as a student. Every opportunity. Embrace it. Do it with thy mind. It may not be convenient. Do it with thy mind. Organize tutorials for those that are weak. How did I get? I was, I was in the midst of a class of diverse students. And how do I preach to these people? The best thing is, okay, I look at it. There was a difficult statistical course. Myself, I was not too good in it. But I said, ah, there's tutorial. Ah, everybody, of course, nobody wants to fail. Everybody wants to come to the tutorial. Whatever I don't know, overnight, I will go to somebody who knew you better than I do. I will get the details of all the formulas, the details of all the, of the, of the particular course. 
And the following day, I will start writing on the board. I will start teaching people. Ah, and start people started. And of course, you can't come and learn free of that. You must take the gospel truth alongside. <laughs> and when the exam was called, and so people were still panicking. I said, okay, let us go and pray. Ah, everybody wanted to pray. And when we got to the prayer ground, give them the raw message. You see, people kneeling down their feet. I don't need to do altar call. I don't need to follow the conventional way of altar call. Took them to a place to pray. Everybody prayed. Not everybody will come to your church. But you go with kingdom focused service to win souls. When we get to the kingdom of heaven, so many of us will be surprised. Ah, and when Jesus Christ started rewarding us, ah, I thought I didn't have any convert in that area. I'm sorry, somebody got saved. You don't know. You never knew. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. B, benefits of kingdom focused service. Point number two, quickly. What are the benefits? Isaiah chapter 45, verse 19. Isaiah 45, 19. The Bible says, I have not spoken in secret. I have not spoken in a dark place of the heart. I said not unto the seed of Jacob, seek ye me in vain. That's God speaking. I have not talked for you to seek me in vain. What are the returns? The wonder returns of kingdom focused service. God is taking record. He has a chronicle of reward that he's keeping for anyone that is faithful. Doing the work. In Isaiah 65, verse 23, he said, They shall not labor in vain. Tell your neighbor, you will not labor in vain. He said, They will not labor in vain nor bring forth for trouble. Your small income will not be for trouble, it won't be for sickness. And if at all you find yourself in some challenging physical situation, you can produce your course like Ezekiah did. Isaiah 41, verse 21. I love that scripture. Isaiah 41, 21. He said, produce your cause. Bring forth your strong reasons. See the king of Jacob. Produce your cause. Bring forth your strong reasons. See the king of Jacob. If at all you find yourself in any mess, yes, if you have been serving God faithfully, oh God, I cannot afford to fail this exam anymore because I'm serving you. It is time for you to reward me. I cannot afford to bear this sickness in my body. It, as Ezekiah was a man, that receive a negative prophecy from a prophet like Isaiah, a prophet that commands national attention. Isaiah was a prophet that commanded national attention in his days, and he came, of course, people respect his prophecy, and he got to Ezekiel's house even without any courtesy or he said, prepare your house because you are going to die tonight. And well, I don't need to debate with you, prophet, thank you. He went to God, to his maker, and said, oh God, remember me. I've done this, I've served you, I've died. I can't afford to die now. And the same prophet it's very difficult for a prophet to withdraw his word. It's very difficult. The same prophet God told him, I go back and tell him about the 15 years. Produce your course. There's always a reward system. What is the first reward? Supreme love for God and fellow men attracts divine blessings. What are the first blessings? The first blessing is divine favor. Divine favor. Everybody say divine favor. Don't forget God is a qualifier of the unqualified. We don't have the time here. Just put down Numbers chapter 17 verse 1 to 8. Number 17, one to eight. Moses and Aaron were the ones that were called. Most times they will stay on the mount. Moses will stay on the mountain praying and fasting. I mean, standing in the presence of God with fasting 40 days and 40 nights. Aaron also will be standing in the gap. And some people were just contending and competing with them. Say, is this only Aaron? And they started running their mouth against Aaron. Started running their mouth against Moses. And God said, okay, let everybody come and submit their rod. And they submit their rod. Let's open to that passage. Number 17. Number 17. And they all submitted their rods. And God said, the rod of the person that, that bores will be the one that is being selected. And what was the reward? Let's see, Numbers uh, chapter 17. Numbers 17, verse 1 to 8. I read from verse 5. And it shall come to pass that the man's rod, whom I shall choose, shall blossom. And I will make to cease from the, me from me the murmurings of the children of Israel, whereby they murmur against you. And in verse 8, and it came to pass that on the morrow Moses went into the tabernacle of, uh, of witness, and beheld the rod of Aaron for the house of Levi was budded, and brought forth buds, and bloomed, bosoms, and yielded almond. Get it right, mark it. It budded, it brought forth buds, it bloomed, and yielded almonds. How many of us know almond food? Now, the rod they are talking about here is an unqualified rod. Biologically, agriculturally, a dry rod. You know the kind of rod that they used to pursue cattle back at home in Africa. That kind of rod cannot even generate root, let alone flowers, let alone bearing fruit. But when the qualifier of the unqualified is at work, 
the one that has been keeping the record of your service, when you submit an application to a school for scholarship, for a job, amidst all the applications, if you have been serving God faithfully, this is the kind of prayer I pray. Oh God, I cannot submit an application and it will not be recognized. Not only did the rod of Aaron bring blossom, it brought out fruit. Overnight, and get it right, it was 20, within 24 hours. Within 24 hours. Within 24 hours. Divine favor. Are you, if you are serving God, oh, I tell you, without complaining, without more money, when you submit application, it must command attention. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Divine favor. Number two, supplies of, to meet essential needs. Supplies. There will be supplies. Luke chapter 1, verse 16. This passage of the scripture I used to I always uh, make me say God is awesome. In Luke chapter 1, verse 16, when all that befell that homie befell her and she lost everything and she was telling her I mean, daughter-in-law to go and let, let her face her the, the, the rest of her life. Ruth stood. In Ruth 1, 16 said, your people shall be my people. Your God shall be my God. And one chapter after that, Ruth chapter 2 verse 16, go and do your research. Ruth 1 16 was where she made the comment. Ruth chapter 2 verse 16, Ruth was just thinking that maybe let me go and let me go and manage this. And God said, no, 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 no. God said, Bible says she was positioned for handfuls of purpose. Handfuls of purpose. When you are serving God, when you make up, because she made up her mind to serve God. She was not among the qualified. Even going by history, she, she a marbitess or what have you, she would not just even enter the territory of the children of Israel for any reason. But she exempted herself from that generational limitation by identifying with God, by serving God. Your people shall be my people, your God shall be my God. How many of us are ashamed of serving God? We shouldn't be ashamed of serving God. The Apostle Paul said, I'm not ashamed because by serving him, it is in this gospel that there's power of salvation. And so shall it be that as we serve, we all have supplies in Jesus' name. Let's answer to prayer. There's also privilege seat in the kingdom. Lastly, that number three point number three, conditions for engaging. How do we engage? How do we engage in kingdom focused service? Truly, we said because Christ Jesus said, Many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called, many people are called into church. Well, if you have chosen, but how can we be chosen? How can we participate? How can we enroll? How can we be engaged? How can our service be acceptable? Because not all services are acceptable. Not all. Not all. Not all services are acceptable. You may be doing it in vain and you don't know. And you are just wasting your time. Why? Because the sacrifice of the wicked are what? It's an abomination before God. That's Proverbs chapter 15 verse 8. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. So, how then? The first step is salvation or restoration. Because now, if you ask anybody, are you born again? Almost everybody will say, I'm born again. But the issue is, are you still connected to your master, to your creator, to your savior? Are you still connected? Except a man be born again, he cannot what? See the kingdom of God. You cannot see God in the long run or in the short run. In the short run, when you need him to assist you, you can't see him. He won't come. Except a man be born again, he cannot see. He cannot see. It means that when somebody is in the womb, when the baby, an embryo is in the womb, that baby is not permitted to open his eyes or her eyes until the baby comes out of the womb. The baby is not permitted to even voice out. If the baby voice out, the voice will not be recognized. If the baby voice out, it is even an it is abomination for a child to be crying inside the womb. <laughs> that is that the voice of a sinner is an abomination to God. The cry of a sinner is an abomination to God. The sacrifice of the one that is committing immorality, manipulating figures for taxes. This taxes, you manipulating things, trying to get more money from the government. The one that is cheating, the one that is telling lies, the one that is no messing around. He said the, uh, the, the, the sacrifice of such a person is an abomination to God. So except a man be born again, except a baby come out of the womb. That's when he can see light. And you may be saying, ah, how do I deliver myself now? I desire to come out. Sometimes a baby cannot come out easily. And so what happens? They have to do CS, cesarean section. 
So if you know that you are so engrossed and some things are tying you down, cry to the master and you know what? God is still merciful. He will conduct a sincere session that will break any shaku, any muzu that is tying you down in that womb and bring you out successfully. Amen. I said the man be born again. What do we need? Our salvation. So if you are a sinner, there is sin. Your service cannot be accepted. Your voice cannot go beyond the silly. I said you turn to God. It's essential that you turn to God. There's also need for humility. Humility. Because humility is what opens the door to opportunities in kingdom focus service. There's need for humility. Humility is the pathway to opportunities in kingdom focus service. There's need for us to humble ourselves, for go our put aside our ego, our position, our our put aside all sentiment and emotions, and do that kingdom focus service with kingdom interest in mind. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And when you give your life to Jesus, when you repent from your sin, then the next thing, before you can, uh, somebody, if you, what you don't have, you cannot give. You have to undergo a training. That's why we, the church has started the discipleship class. So if you have not joined, you have never been to that class before, you have never got, undergone any training that is exposing you to the rudiments of the scripture, to the teachings of the scripture, you need to join that class every Sunday. And then undergo the training that will open your eyes and then put you on that platform. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So there's need for consistency as well. We don't stop, by the way. Don't forget, when you start a race, in any relay race, the starter doesn't get reward. The one that is continuing doesn't get reward. It is the one that gets to the end of the table that gets the reward. It is until when we hear, well done, thou faithful servant, you have been faithful in few things, come down into my rest and be thou ruler over many cities. It is until when we get there that we can get the reward. There's need for consistency. Number one, salvation, if you are still a sinner. Restoration, if you are a backslider. Humility, if you have been doing the work and you are almost tired, continue to humble yourself, continue to persist. Steadfastness. Let's bow our eyes for prayer this morning. Kingdom focused service, engaging in kingdom focused service. And we want to give room to anyone you, are, you desire to serve God, you desire to do His will, you desire to walk in His, in his precepts. You de- but your hands are not clean, your thoughts are not clean. You know better than I do. There are three things that can testify to the character of a man what people around you know about you what you know about yourself, and what the supreme comment of God about you. It is possible for you to deceive fellow human beings, to deceive your neighbor, to deceive members in the church, to deceive your spouse, but you cannot deceive God. You cannot deceive God. All things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. You are rendering the service, but you know your hands are not clean. Your sacrifices are an abomination unto God. But it's time for you this morning. Just open up your heart to God. We are not calling, we are not making any altar call between you and your creator. Between you and your creator. What are the things that will not make you acceptable? That will not make your service acceptable before God? Ask God for pardon this morning. Open up your heart. Open up your heart. Open up your heart and say, God, here am I. I need your deliverance. I need liberation. I need your support. I need you to liberate me from this. And if you have gone away, you have gone away or you have identified one thing or the other in your life, Tell the Lord, here am I this morning. Come into my heart. Come and take your place. I desire to serve you. Ruth was a woman that deserted the land of Moab. And she said to Naomi, your people shall be my people. Your God shall be my God. She deserted all. She deserted all her practices. She deserted all her profession. She deserted her friends. She deserted any other thing that could hinder her. And what, how do we see it? And what was the reward? A Moabite, a Moabites. Having a name in the scripture of life, can you imagine? Not even Virgin Mary has a title in the Bible, has, has a book in the Bible, but Ruth has a book in the Bible. That is the reward. That is the reward. God will always single out those who have made up their mind to serve Him. Turn your heart to God today. Take your place in my heart. Tell the Lord, take your place in my heart. And if you are the one you have been doing it, you have been working for God, you are getting tired. Ask God for corresponding grace, not to give up. Corresponding strength, 
to bear, to, 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 to continue, to be steadfast, to be unmovable, to be unmovable, to be unmovable. Jesus didn't lose it. They angered him before he got to the cross. They, he was beaten. He was stripped. He, he, they, spat, they spatted on him. They put crowns on his head. They nailed his hands to the cross. And on the cross, some people were still, somebody was still really on him. Somebody, some people were still you know, playing game on his garment. And he, still, he didn't lose it. He didn't lose it. He said, God, just forgive them. Oh, can you ask for corresponding grace not to give up, not to blow up, not to be pissed up, but to continue to remain steadfast? Is any, is any of your siblings still in the world? Don't give up. Abraham didn't give up on Lot. He continued to show the love. He, continued, he interceded until Lord was delivered from the spell of the fire that came on Sodom and Gomorrah. A fire is coming. A day of reckoning is coming. Hey, very soon, the, the whistle will soon be blown. The curtain will soon be drawn. The sheep will, be, the sheep will soon be The goats will soon be separated from the sheep. Ah, do you want, do you have any sibling that is still outside there? Any parent, any member of your, of your family that is still outside there? Can you stand in the gap before the whistle is blown? Before the curtain is drawn, before it is over, can you show a little bit of love and kindness like those four friends did for the sake of Parsi, that man that was bedridden? He couldn't help himself. But Jesus saw, he saw the fate of his brothers, of his, bro of, of, of his friends. That was what Jesus saw. Can Jesus see your fate? On the behalf of your sibling? Can he see your faith for the, for the salvation of your, of your son? Can he see your faith on the, for the salvation of your daughter? Can he see you exercising faith? Jesus saw the faith of the, of the friends of the man that was sick of palsy. And he had compassion on the man. He addressed the problem of sin. And then gave him the healing from his sickness. Can we show some little bit of love on uh, some, 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 some bit of love and kindness. Can we go an extra mile, just as we sang this morning, to offer help to bring some hope to the fainting and discouraged on life's road, to see a need and to lend a hand. There are many who are crushed beneath their load. Can we go? Can we identify with the need of the people? Those people that are criticizing us. Those people that will not necessarily follow us. Just like Peter, mother, saying, Lord, will not necessarily follow Jesus. But Jesus identifying. Oh, this, that same day, that same day the woman rose up and started ministering to Jesus. That same day the woman rose up and started ministering to Jesus. Can we identify with people that are criticizing us, castigating us, provoking us? Can we identify with them at the grassroots? Can we identify with them at their level and then trust God and then trust God to save them and don't trust God to liberate them. The Lord will find us worthy, He will find us useful in Jesus' name. Use me, Jesus, use me. Let's rise up on our feet. Use me, Jesus, use me. They make that commitment unto God this morning. Tell this life of mine. Oh, take this life of mine and use me, Lord Jesus. Take this life of, take this life of mine. Take this life of mine and you use me, O oh Lord. Use me, Jesus. Use me. Use me, Jesus, use me, Lord Jesus, take this life of mine, precious Father, take this mine of mine, and use me, Lord Jesus, take this life of mine, use it for life of mine. And use me. Amen. Now I want to picture somebody on your list, whether you have one, whether you have two, in your family. Say we should learn to show good to all men, especially to people of the household of faith. What good? The good news of salvation. What kind of goodness? The good news that can save them. Is there anybody in your family? Any of your children? Any of your classmates as a youth, any of your city mate as a college student, any roommate that is here to be saved. Christ Jesus said, Behold, I give unto you the keys of the kingdom. He said, Whatever you lose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Can you begin to lose that one from the shackles of sin? Say, I lose this one. 
I lose my sympathy. Lose them from every grip of satanic stronghold. The grip of sin. Anything tying them down. Do you have a co-worker? Lose him. Lose him. Lose him. Whatever we lose or not shall be loose in heaven. He said, concerning the work of my hand. He said, command ye me. This person is the work of your hand, O oh God. From the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. O oh God, I command. Let him be released from the grip of sin. In the name of Jesus. Stand in the gap. Let God hear your voice. Let God hear your voice. Stand in the gap on the behalf of your spouse. Stand in the gap on the behalf of your children. Stand in the gap on the behalf of your co-worker. Stand in the behalf of your neighbor. That neighbor that is always playing high music and disturbing your life. Stand in the gap. They can't be saved. They can't be saved. Show a little bit of love and kindness. Never go along with atheist blindness. That's the way. To make the world a happy place to live. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Probably you've been doing this work. And you say, where is the reward? Do I have anything to show for it? I would say, produce your cause. Bring forth your strong reasons. But you say, oh God, remember me. In this new week, remember me. The Lord God that worked out things for Heron and remembered him. The Lord God that remembered David. While he was busy serving as a shepherd in the field, even his biological father didn't remember him, God was keeping a chronicle of reward that nobody can gain say. Ezekiah was a man that he was given the, <laughs> the quick notice, <laughs> a, 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 a warranty of death, but he cried and he was savage. Pray to God, let this new week open up with new solution, new deliverance. New opportunities. He said, I have not spoken in darkness. I have not spoken in secret places. I have not called the house of Israel to seek me in vain. He said, they shall not labor in vain. You will not read in vain as a student. If you are doing this work, your reading must not be in vain. Have you applied somewhere? Your application must command favor. Remember me, O Lord. Let this new week open up with new mercies. Pray and so shall it be for you.